It's April the 9th, 1861, and Texas has just become the seventh state to join the new Confederate States of America, and the prospect of war is real and imminent. Governor Sam Houston, a staunch Unionist, has been removed from office, replaced by Lieutenant Governor Edward Clark. Clark has just received a requisition for 3,000 troops from the Confederate government. A week later, he'll receive another for an additional 5,000 men. Able-bodied men from all over the state are joining their county militia units with names like the Texas Invincibles from St. Augustine County or the Bayou City Guards from Harris County. One of those young men was 18-year-old George Albert Bernard, who enlisted in the Lone Star Rifles in Galveston. George Bernard was born in 1843, and he was born in Galveston Island, Texas. And his mother, Julia, was born in, in England and came over um, to the United States and was married not too long after she arrived, and uh, later she would get divorced. but. Uh, George Bernard uh, grew up and he wanted to be a mechanic, so that's why he was doing uh, before the war, was before the secession. And uh, he went into a couple of business ventures with his mom in, into music. But uh, he was just a mechanic. And uh, one thing about George Bernard, there's only two gentlemen in the Civil War that said that had the heart of a lamb but the courage of a lion. That's Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain and that's George A. Bernard. Both Clark and Confederate Secretary of War Leroy Pope Walker thought that the Texas troops should stay in Texas for both frontier and coastal defense. It was imperative that the Texas ports, especially the deep water port at Galveston, remain open. But after the fall of Fort Sumter, there was a rush of Texas men who wanted to go to the Eastern Theater to defend the Confederacy. Ten companies of men, primarily from East Texas, began the journey to Richmond without authorization. No one knew if the Confederacy would accept these Texas units. All of the companies that would become the 1st Texas Infantry Regiment straggled into Richmond between May and September of 1861. Many units marched to Shreveport or Alexandria, Louisiana, proceeded by riverboat to New Orleans, and then by train to Richmond. The towns along the way opened their arms to the traveling Texans. The Reagan Guards from Anderson County were treated to a 4th of July barbecue in Shreveport, Louisiana. George Bernard and the Lone Star Rifles proceeded by steamboat and rail from Galveston to Sabine and then marched 150 miles through the muck to New Iberia where they boarded steamboats and rail cars again to get to New Orleans, as reported in the August 16th edition of the Times-Picayune newspaper. By July of 1861, enough companies had reached Richmond to form the 1st Texas Infantry Battalion. The Confederate government had allowed the Texans to remain with the condition that the government would pick their regimental officers. They selected Lewis T. Wigfall as Lieutenant Colonel and Hugh McLeod as Major. Wigfall had been a U.S. Senator from Texas up until secession when he resigned, and McLeod was a former general in the Republic of Texas Army and a former state legislator. The battalion was supposed to fight at the First Battle of Manassas, but a train wreck on the way killed or wounded 40 and delayed the battalion until the fighting was over. After their pursuit of the Union Army, they moved to Dumfries, Virginia, where they would stay for the winter of 1861-1862. Meanwhile, back in Texas, enlistments continued. The Confederate government had requisitioned an additional 2,000 men to fight in Virginia. 2,000 men are roughly 20 companies of 100 men each, or two infantry regiments. These would become the 4th and 5th Texas Infantry. Governor Clark had also issued an executive order to establish camps of instruction. One of those camps was named after the governor, Camp Clark, in Guadalupe County. We're here on the banks of the San Marcos River in Guadalupe County at the location of Camp Clark. It was here that volunteer recruits were housed, trained, and equipped to the extent that they could be with the weapons that they brought with them or that were requisitioned from local civilians. The camp, commanded by Robert Thomas Pritchard Allen, who'd established the Bastrop Military Institute, provided plenty of shade and fresh water for the recruits. It was here that some of the units that would become part of the 4th Texas Infantry, including the Guadalupe Rangers, 
trained and drilled before moving to Camp Van Dorn in Harrisburg, where they waited for transport to Virginia. One of the new recruits to muster in at Camp Clark was Valerius Cincinnatus Giles, known as Val, who joined the Tom Green Rifles, being organized by the former mayor of Austin, Benjamin Franklin Carter. Val was a 19-year-old farmer who had moved to Texas with his parents in 1849. When the war broke out, his eldest brother, William, had joined the 10th Texas Infantry, and middle brother, Lewis, had joined the 8th Texas Cavalry, Terry's Texas Rangers. He tells the story in his book, Rags and Hope, that just before he left, his father took him to Austin to buy him a new hat because he didn't like the cap that Val had. He took him to the Samson and Hendricks store on Congress Street and bought Val the best hat in the store. 120 miles away in Washington County, Jerome Robertson, a popular physician in Independence, Texas, was recruiting a company of men called the Texas Aids. One of those recruits was the 37-year-old mayor of Independence and father of three, Tacitus Thomas Clay, known as Taz. Clay was the son of Nestor Clay, one of Washington County's pioneers. Taz was mustered into the AIDS on August the 3rd, 1861. As his last act as mayor of Independence, Clay went to the town square and cut down the Liberty Pole with the U.S. flag. The Independence men went by train to Harrisburg, where they were officially mustered into the Confederate States Army on September the 7th. Jerome Robertson was elected captain and Taz Clay lieutenant. Harrisburg, just east of Houston on the Buffalo Bayou, was the home of Camp Van Dorn, named after Brigadier General Earl Van Dorn. Camp Van Dorn was selected as a staging area for all of the companies moving to Richmond. By late July and early August, most of the companies had consolidated in Harrisburg. Summer in Harrisburg, with its heat and humidity and inadequate water supply, didn't lend itself to housing large groups of men, much less training and drilling in the dead of the southeast Texas summer. By August the 17th, the men started to depart, taking a similar route to what the first Texas Lone Star Guards had taken. Rail, steamship, a march across the Louisiana swamp following the old Spanish trail to New Iberia, where they were treated like heroes, lavishly fed and provided rations for the journey. From New Iberia, they traveled by steamship and rail down to New Orleans. The first five companies, which would become the 4th Texas Infantry, left New Orleans on September the 1st for the 1,200-mile journey to Richmond. Now a bustling urban neighborhood on the James River in Richmond, in the fall of 1861, Rocket's Landing was a thriving commercial port that provided Richmond with access to the Atlantic. It was here that the Texans would make their temporary camp and organize into two regiments of 10 companies each, the 4th and 5th Texas Infantries. In the process, they lost their unit names that they'd given themselves in Texas and were designated standard military company designations. The Confederate government had also reserved the right to name regimental commanders. The Texas troops chafed at not being able to elect their own leaders, especially the non-Texans. Louis Wigfall, who was already the commander of the 1st Texas Battalion, was promoted to colonel to lead the 1st Texas Infantry Regiment, with Major McLeod being promoted to lieutenant colonel. One of the more interesting stories is that of R.T.P. Allen, who had gained the reputation as a tyrant from his time commanding Camp Clark and at Camp Van Dorn. He was named the first commander of the 4th Texas Infantry, but there was such a backlash that the troops literally ran him out of camp. John Bell Hood, who would go on to become one of the most famous generals in the Confederacy, was named to replace him and promoted to colonel. James J. Archer, a lawyer from Maryland and a veteran of the Mexican War was selected to command the 5th Texas Infantry. And the Texans again chafed at being led by a non-Texan. Many thought him to be a good man, but not right to command the Texans. But after some time, most accepted him for his military service. The men of the 4th also took a dislike to John F. Marshall, who had been the editor of the Austin State Gazette newspaper. Through his friendship with Jefferson Davis, he was appointed lieutenant colonel in the 4th Texas. Although a Texan, his inexperience was shown through immediately, 
something that was inexcusable in the eyes of the Texans. But he survived a petition for his resignation and would go on to lead the fourth after Hood's promotion to Brigadier General. In the early part of October 1861, the fourth and fifth left their camp at Rocket's Landing and established a new camp about four miles east of Richmond called Camp Bragg or Camp Texas by the Texans. There they spent their time training and participating in close order drills. On October the 22nd, 1861, Judah P. Benjamin, the new Secretary of War, assigned the 4th and 5th Texas Infantry Regiments to join the 1st Texas at Dumfries, Virginia, creating the new 5th Brigade in the 4th Division under the command of newly minted Brigadier General Lewis Wigfall, and the Texas Brigade was born. 